Hello everyone, and especially you fragrance lovers out there. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Welcome to my channel. Today I had planned on doing an unboxing and first impressions of Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct Extreme. However, instead, I was sent Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct. No extreme. And as everyone knows, I'm an extremist. So that made me mad. I was really upset. Not really that upset. So I decided to keep this and go ahead and do the unboxing and first impressions of First Instinct and then reorder the extreme and do that later. So coming up next, Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct, unboxing and first impressions. Stay tuned. Hey guys and welcome back. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, I had ordered Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct Extreme, heard lots of good things about it, was excited to get it, and when I got it in, the box wasn't silver, it was this color here, which is like a dark maroon or a brownish color, and I knew that to be the, the front of First Instinct. Well, I wasn't super upset because I wanted this too. I'm gonna do it later than earlier, do Extreme first. So instead, I will do this, and then do extreme later. However, I did wanna make you aware of this particular seller. If you do go to walmart.com, it's just kind of a staging area for a lot of subsidiaries. If you use Deals Are Us, these guys right here, I'm gonna kinda of show you my order sheet, my invoice right here. Yes, I know, I paid $42 for this, and even if you ordered it from fragrance.net for about 28 bucks and ordered it by itself, that's what, $6.95 for shipping. Still a few dollars less than what I paid for this, but that's okay. Hey, it's some crazy times that we're living in. I'm just gonna go ahead and accept things as they happen, as far as I am able to accept them, and then just move on. Because I really wanted to do an unboxing for you today, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's get right into it. Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct. <laughs> things packaged just as it normally is no big deal there now I do like the box it is kind of slightly tactile it's got kind of like ribbed for your pleasure on the top there is nothing as you can see on one side there's nothing just like the bottle on the other side there is an embossed silver plate but it's not actually metal it's just embossed on the side of the box so it kind of mimics the bottle on the very bottom of course you have your product information, SKU, and batch code. You can see that. All right, let's take this out of the box and take a look at it. You can see, pull that down there. Just your typical boxing and pull this fragrance out. Now I do really like this bottle. There's a couple things that I like about the bottle. The cap is a kind of a silver striated cap it does fit really well. In fact, you can, of course, you know, hold the bottle up by the cap. It fits really snugly, which is good. It keeps your juice protected. The bottle itself is kind of undulates. It's, it's meant to mimic water, calm, still waters on the ocean, which is really neat as it is a primarily an aquatic fragrance. And that's on both sides of the bottle. One side is flat and the other side has that silver plate, which is actually a metal plate and it's not engraved but it's embossed and it says Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct. I'm gonna hold it up a little bit closer. I like things that are engraved or embossed. I think it's just that little bit extra touch there when you can adorn your fragrance bottle with something that kind of sets it apart, makes it a little bit for more a little bit fancier. A lot of people gave Dolce & Gabbana K some flack because of the crown that's on top, but I kind of like the crown. It's one of those either love it or hate it things. To me, I don't mind. I'm not super hard to please. I do like this bottle. It is clear with a slight light blue tinge, grayish blue tinge to the, and it almost looks purple. That's the Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct bottle. Now it's very similar to Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct Blue. In fact, First Instinct Blue and First Instinct Extreme both are the only two flankers to First Instinct and they came out in 2018 at the same time, approximately the same time, same year. And the bottles are also very similar. Now when I get Extreme in, 
we'll do a comparison of all three. Now, First Instinct was the brainchild or creation of Philippe Romano. He wanted to create a fragrance that balanced the, both the modern frugere with the oriental warmth. So he wanted something that would assist the modern man who wasn't afraid to express his feeling. It's considered an aromatic oriental fougere. It does have ozonic notes in it. Actually, let's go over the, the note listing, the note breakdown. In the top, you've got gin, you've got tonic water, and kawano melon. Now, kawano melon isn't like a melon fragrance. It doesn't have a real a tropical melon uh, citrusy fragrance to it. It's more like fresh cucumbers with just a twist of citrus to it. It's an interesting aroma and it's interesting choice to use in First Instinct. In the mid you've got Szechuan pepper, you've got violet leaf, it gives it that violet leaf gives typically gives fragrances and kind of an airy violet sensation that's super when it's done well it's super pleasant and then citruses going down into the base we have that that awesomely familiar trifecta of uh, suede musk and amber raw amber according to fragrantica.com the primary notes that stand out in this fragrance are the melon, the kawano melon, the gin, the very distinctive gin, which is flavored by juniper berry. So I imagine there might be a little bit of juniper berry, more, more aquatic with the tonic water. And then you've got your musk, your violet leaf, your Szechuan pepper, and then your raw amber. So let's stop talking about it and give it a shot. Now I'm not gonna spray it on a tester strip simply because I really like spraying on skin. It gives you more realistic aroma, a realistic idea of what the projection is going to be and perhaps even the longevity. So let's give that a try. Currently don't have anything on, on either arm. So let's give that a try here. One, two, three. It doesn't spray a ton. Maybe it's just me. It feels like it's limited when you push down on it. It does come out pretty good. Okay. I'm getting quite a bit of that just as a kind of a side effect of spraying this four times. Okay, so first of all, my thoughts on this. This promises to have a good projection, a good to average projection. It actually has better projection than does blue when I first spray First Instinct Blue on. So that's promising. But one of the challenges of blue for me is its longevity. I unfortunately only get about four to five hours longevity. Now some people might say, well, that's not bad. It's not, I'm not complaining, but it's not definitely not a banger. My idea of this as a oriental fougere though, is that it's gonna last longer. That's my expectation and should be your expectation as well. So, so far, I like the fact that it's more aromatic. You can catch this easily within a couple of feet. I, I definitely feel kind of like a, the nimbus of the projection here. I let it dry down to kind of get a better idea. That top is very, very melony, uh, very bright, very citrusy, very melony, actually a little bit reminiscent of Fierce. It kind of has that pungency that Fierce does, a little bit of that DNA, but not specifically like it at all. So thanks to the magic of editing, I'm gonna go ahead and stop this right here and I'm gonna come back after it's dried down for about an hour. I'm, well, I'm not gonna wait that long. I'll give it about 30, a good 30 minutes. So you guys get something to drink, take a bathroom break, whatever you need to do, see what's coming up next on your favorite television show. I'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, so I've let this dry down for a good 30, 40 minutes and I'm quite impressed because the dry down is keeping that same nimbus or projection that it did in the in the very beginning. So once I sprayed this on and the actual initial spray died down, this kept about a good one to two foot projection and it's, it's still there, I can still smell it. And when you smell something, initially, if you get initial blasts, especially when you did what I did and you spray three or four blasts of this and it goes straight into your schnoz, you might wanna try blowing it out or resetting your olfactory with something like coffee grounds or something that's known to reset your sense of smell. I don't know about longevity. I feel like it's probably gonna have good to just above average in longevity, probably about six to eight hours of longevity. To me, that's really good. 
and that's a little bit above average, at least for modern fragrances. Uh, modern fragrances seem to have a little bit less longevity for the most part. They all seem to hit right around that six to six to eight hour mark, and that's actually not bad. That's pretty good. So thankfully, you can pick out the violet leaf in this. Occasionally, it gets lost in that that deep the must, the amber, and the and the suede. The suede gives it a little bit of a diffused softness. The amber is really nice and bright and warm as it is in most oriental fougeres or fougeres. But you can detect that violet leaf and then of course that melon brings it back up and lifts it back up, makes it feel more aquatic. It makes it feel more ozonic. The, the gin, the, the tonic water adds to the ozonic or aquatic feel to it. And then that, that melon keeps it bright, keeps it in the upper register. So that's probably, in all likelihood, what, what's contributing to the projection. Hopefully, in the long run, contribute to the longevity as well. And I can see why on Fragrantica that out of, what was it, 750 votes, it's like at a 4.06 or something like that. That's a pretty decent vote, and that's a pretty good idea of what this is like. Normally, I do look at Fragrantica before purchasing something to get an overall idea of what people think. I'm not necessarily swayed by that, because even if I see something has a three, if it's got notes in it that I'm interested in, I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it for myself. And you should be that way too. Don't take the masses' <laughs> opinion on something. Don't take my opinion on something you can take a general idea that i'm sharing with you you know if you respect come to respect my opinion but try it for yourself first now don't do like i did and purchase it from dills or us for a lot more than you need to get it from a discounter that you've used in the past like fragrance.net or or fragrance x or perfume.com all right guys that's it for my unboxing and first impressions of abercrombie and fitch first instinct I like blue, I like this even better. I'm looking forward to getting extreme. I apologize it wasn't extreme today, but I will be bringing that to you in the future. In the times that we're living, please stay safe. Uh, please take care of yourself and your family first before anyone else. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, thank you so much for the support that you give me. I'm Tommy with Studio Sense, and I'll see you next time.